We're going to do a video for the pace 8 in geometry, which is 1116. Looking at pages 7 and 8 with ratios, and personally, I love ratios. I think ratios are a fun and easy way to solve uh, lots of different math problems. But in course in geometry, we're trying to show why certain things are true and show the steps and the reasons and uh, then later we can use that to solve some problems. And so uh, let's look at <clears throat> if A is to B, all right, as C is to D. So we're saying that um, so this is a proportion or a ratio. The uh, theorem, I think it's 84 in the pace back here on page 6. It says, in a proportion, the product of the extremes equals the product of the means. Now, I, I can never keep straight which is the extremes. I think this is the extremes, AD, and then the mean is the ones in the middle. I would just say the cross products are equal. So if we cross multiply A times D, that will equal B times C. Okay? Always, always, always. So even with this example with numbers, notice 1 times 15 equals 3 times 5. Okay, so that's uh, it's an easy way to picture that. Now let's see what we're going to do with this. I'm going to illustrate this and we'll talk about it and then you'll actually do a different proof, similar but different, on page 7. So I have these cross products and now I'm choosing to divide by AC. Now why can I do this? I've done the cross products, so that's theorem 84 set them equal to each other, but now I'm dividing both of them by the same thing. Um, I believe if you go way back in one of the early paces, that's called the division property. That as long as we divide both sides by the same thing, it remains equal. So we can say these two things are still equal because they're both being divided by AC. Now watch what happens here. A cancels out here, and C cancels out here, and so I'm left with I'm going to write it this way, B is to A as D is to C, okay? So I've taken this one and flipped it upside down. B is to A as D is to C. So I've simplified this. I've, I've gone ahead and done the division property and come up with this restatement, okay, with the same terms. Now I could come up here, and if I did a similar thing, dividing both sides and canceling, I could get A is to C as B is to D. Now let's look over here at the original one. So we're saying in this ratio, A is to C as B is to D. So that would also work, okay? I could also go the other direction and say C is to A as D is to B. Now the order, obviously is important. This is why it's a, a ratio or proportion. The order is important. But there are four ways to state the same thing. Let's try it with numbers here. I'm going to treat this as A, this is B, this is C, this is D. Let's try this one here, B over A. So 3 over 1 as D is to C. So that would be 15 is to 5. Let's see if that's true. If you reduced 15 over 5, you would get 3, and 3 divided by 1 is 3, so that makes sense with the numbers here. And again, the cross products are still equal, right? Let's take uh, A is to C, so that would be like saying 1 is to 5 as 3 is to 15. Let's check it and see if this works. One fifth. And if I take the fraction 3 fifteenths and reduce it, I would get 1 fifth again. So yes, it works. And again, the cross products are equal. And then the last one is D is to C, or D, C is to A, sorry, C is to A. So that's like saying 5 is to 1 as 15 is to 3. So that's another restatement using the same numbers, just rearranging the order. Let's see if this still works. 5 is to 1 as 15 is to 3. If we reduce this, yes, I get 5. So both of these equal 5, and again, the cross products are equal. So there's four ways to state any um, ratio between numbers. 
So on page eight, you're going to do, um, page seven and page eight, some, some practice um, with that and applying that, all right? Now let's do one more illustration here from page eight. <clears throat> We start with A, whoop, make that look more like an A. A is to B as C over D. And they're saying that if we add the same thing to both sides, and they're going to say, let's add one, okay? So A over B plus one would be equal to C over D plus one. Now, the thing is, when we're adding with fractions, we have to have a common denominator, okay? So, this is going to be B over B, and this one is going to be D over D. And so then we could simplify this and say A plus B over B equals C plus D over D. So all we've done is basically added whatever the denominator is to the numerator, okay? Add the denominator to the numerator, keep it over that denominator. Do the same thing on the other side with these numbers. Numerator plus denominator, okay? Keep it over the denominator. So let's try it with, um, with the fraction here. Let's see. Adding 5, let's do 5 over 2 equals 30 over 12. All right, so follow with me here. If I'm adding, then I'm going to take... 5, add the denominator, which is 2, or keep it over 2, all right? And then over here, I'm going to do 30 plus 12, but keep it over the 12, all right? Let's see what we get. 7 over 2 equals 42 over 12. Now, if this worked, if I did it correctly, we should be able to do the cross product. So like here, 2 times 30 is um, 60, 5 times 12 is 60. Let's see if this still works down here. What's 2 times 42? 84. What's 7 times 12? 84. So the cross products are still equal. We could have done the same thing here, but do subtraction, 5 minus 2. Then I would have 3 over 2 and do 30 minus 12, okay, keep it over the 12. So we can do addition or subtraction, and they want you to use this formula and uh, always be adding whatever the denominator is or subtracting the, the uh, denominator from the numerator. All right, so hopefully with that illustration, page 7 and 8 will be uh, a little easier for you.